Hi everybody and welcome to my Stamparia Songs of the Sea mini album tutorial series designed for Scrap and Create. The products that I am using today from the Stamparia Songs of the Sea collection are listed in the description box below so you can click on those links to go to the Scrap and Create website to purchase those products and follow along. And there are also links to some products available in my Etsy shop, so if you would like to purchase those, you can click on those links too. Stay tuned for the tutorial. We're going to begin assembling the cover for the album. I have my wooden wrap cover here that I will be using that I'll show you how to do. Now, if you are using chipboard for yours, instead of purchasing this, you want to cut two pieces that are five and a quarter, by seven and a half. That'll be your front and back cover. It won't have this piece on it. And then your spine, two and a half by seven and a half. If you do want to have a similar look to this where it comes up the side and over, you'll wanna cut a piece here that's like this, except for it's two and five eighths by seven and a half. And then this piece here you would want to cut that to about one and a quarter inches. So one and a quarter by seven and a half, or you can make it larger if you want to, and then you can cut that piece. But if you just want the basic book, two pieces for front and back covers, one piece for your spine. And then you will have to follow a different tutorial to either do the full wrap method or the lay flat cover method. I do have a lay flat cover method on other videos in my, in my channel, so you can look at one of those, but the dimensions obviously will probably be different. Or you can look at other tutorials if you don't know how. For my album, I'm using the wooden cover, so I'm going to show you how I'm gonna connect those pieces together with cardstock. I have four pieces of cardstock. These are cut to one and a quarter by seven and a half. Now on the first one here, you can see that I have two lines on my page in the center. I'm going to mark the second one the same way I marked this one to show you how I did this. Now when we put these pieces together, we're going to need to leave a gap between these so that whenever we bend our cover into the book shape, there is enough of this cardstock to make that bend. So if it was right next to each other, it wouldn't be able to bend. Now, because my wood is an eighth of an inch, I need a quarter inch gap between my pieces. So what I'm going to do here, I'm using my centering ruler. What I'm doing is I'm going to mark this. I'm going to first center this, and then I'm going to mark an eighth of an inch on either side of center. Now, what you can also do you can place this on your grid here and you can mark this here and here so you've got your center. You've got a half an inch on either side. Once I have my marks, I'm going to go ahead and draw a vertical line so that I have a guide for where I'm going to be placing my pieces. Now to assemble this, I'm going to take my first piece and I'm going to apply my adhesive to one of these half inch end sections, not adding any adhesive over that vertical line. Then I'm going to apply my first cover piece right up to that line. And then I'm going to flip this over and burnish this down with my bone folder. Then I'm going to take my adhesive again and add more adhesive to the other half inch section on the other side. Again, not adding any into that quarter inch section in the middle. Now I'll take my spine piece and I'm going to use my ruler here as well, but I'm going to take my spine piece first and lay it on this line. Then I'm going to use my ruler to make sure that the two pieces are flat and straight. 
And then I'm going to make sure it didn't move at all at the top either. And then I'm going to press this down. Then I'm gonna flip over and burnish from the back side. Taking my second strip, I'm going to add my adhesive first to one of the half inch sections on the side. I'm going to place my piece here on the other side of my spine piece, lining up the edge of my spine with that first mark that I've made on the paper. Then I'll flip over and burnish from the back side. Now I'm going to add more adhesive to the last half inch section on this paper. Taking my final cover piece, I'm going to first lay it down on that line. Then I will use my ruler to make sure that it is straight across with all three pieces. Same thing at the top. And then press this down with my bone folder and flip over and burnish from the back side. Once I have all of my pieces connected, I'm going to go ahead and use my straight edge. That bottom edge looks good, but I need to clean up this top edge. Excuse my head. I'm just going to come in here and run my straight edge right down the edge of my cover to trim that little tiny piece off that was just a little too big. So now everything is nice and straight. It's all together on the outside. We need to take care of the inside. Now I'm going to set this aside for now and I'm going to bring one of these pieces in. This is my back cover. So it's going to go over here. Now I'm going to place this here on this side of my paper, like this, right on that line. To do this, I'm just going to be using my regular tacky glue. You don't need to use wood glue here. I mean, you can if you really want to, but the tacky glue will work just fine for this step. And I'm making sure that I'm not adding any glue past that first line that I made on my page. So I'm going to go ahead and just place this right down on top of there. And then I will press this down. And then I'm gonna flip over to the outside and I'll press this down with my bone folder. And I will trim this in a little bit once I'm done, once I have it on, I'm going to run my straight edge down there just to make sure that it is the exact same size as my cover is. So next I'm going to take my adhesive and I'm going to add that adhesive here to the end half inch piece. Again, making sure that I don't add my adhesive into that quarter inch in the center of the piece. I don't need any in there. So I want to just make sure I leave it plain for now. Then I'm going to take my spine piece and lay my spine piece next. And here I'm going to take my ruler and make sure that the edges are straight. here. And while I'm holding this, making sure that it's straight here at the top as well. Then I'm going to flip this over and burnish this from the outside as well. I'll take my second piece and add my adhesive to one of the end half inch sections. Once 
Once I have my adhesive on, I'm going to go ahead and place it on my spine piece, lining my spine up with that vertical line, and then I'll burnish this down. And then flip over and burnish from the outside. Then I'm going to add my adhesive to this half inch edge section. And next I'm going to take my front cover and place it here right on that line and then use my ruler to make sure that everything is lined up nice and straight and then burnish this down and then flip over and burnish from the outside. Now that I have those on, I'm going to come in here with my straight edge and just clean up these edges. So I will apologize for my head being in the frame, but I need to see this a little bit better to be able to run my straight edge right across the edge of those covers. So then when I flip this over, a little snag on that one. Maybe my fussy cutting scissors will work a little bit better. My blade on my straight edge is a little bit dull. Okay, so now I have that cleaned up everything looks good from here I'm going to flip over with the remaining two pieces we're going to create a piece that looks like this for those final pieces so I have my scoreboard here on my scoring tool and what I'm going to do is place this at one and a quarter then I'm going to score this three inches or three eighths of an inch. Then at one half, then at three quarters and seven eighths. So then I'll have a three eighth inch piece on each end, an eighth inch piece and then a quarter inch gusset. Next I'm going to fold this piece so I'm going to fold in on my first score line and use my bone folder to burnish. Then I'm going to open up and fold in on that second score line and burnish again. Then I'm going to flip to the other side, fold in on my first score line, open up and fold in on my second score line. Now I'm going to open up the opposite direction and fold in on my second score line and burnish. Then I'm going to fold back on that first score line and burnish. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to fold in on the second score line and burnish. And then fold back on that first score line and burnish. Then I will go ahead and open it a little bit, press this other side in. So 
So now I have my pieces that look like this. With my first piece, I'm going to flatten this out a little bit and add adhesive to the entire back side of my piece. This is where I would recommend that you actually use glue. I don't think double-sided tape would be a good option here just because of how this needs to stick into the actual cover itself. So I have all of my adhesive covering all of the pieces there. I'm going to place this down on my cover first and then press this right down into that quarter inch between those pieces. With the second piece, I'm going to repeat that same process, adding my adhesive to the entire backside, and then I will place this right in that gap. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead and bend our covers up. I like to press it so that the actual front and back covers are on top of my spine, but you can also put it so that they are beside the spine if you want a little bit more room. So I'm going to do that. Then I will take my bone folder and run it down here to crease my paper around those folds. So now we have our cover formed and ready to go. Next, we'll go ahead and make the hinges and add them to the spine. For our page hinges, we're going to need two pieces of cardstock. The first one is two and a half inches by seven and a quarter inches. The second one is three and a half inches by seven and a quarter inches. Now we're going to score both of these pieces at one half inch increments across the entire thing. So for the three and a half one, we're gonna score at one half, at one, one and a half, at two, two and a half, and three. Then for the two and a half inch piece, I'm going to score one half, one, one and a half, and two. Next, we're going to take both pieces from that first score line. We're going to cut from that score line inward, creating that miter. So starting at that score line, cutting in. Same thing on all four of these. So each one from the score line inward. Same thing on the larger hinge piece. We're going to cut 
those outer four corners. And then we're going to start folding our pieces. So I like to fold in the center first, make sure that this is lined up top and bottom, and then use my bone folder to burnish from the center outward. That way my lines stay, stay straight and this doesn't move and become crooked. So I'm going to fold first all these score lines in one direction and burnish. And then when I finish in this direction, I'm actually going to flip that piece over and I'm going to burnish these in the opposite direction just so that these will fold a little bit easier when I go to turn my pages once my album is finished. So I just need to work my paper in both directions, keeping these nice and straight. So once I have my first one finished, I'm going to do the same thing with my second piece, starting in the center first, lining up the top and the bottom, making sure that it's straight, and then working my way out. Once you have it all folded in one direction, flip over the opposite way, fold and burnish in the second direction. Once I have my two hinge pieces complete, I need to mark the center of my spine to know where to place them. Now I'm going to be placing mine on my spine here like this, then I will add decorative strips later. If you do not want to see the wood down here and at the top, you want to place a piece on the spine with your cardstock to completely cover that, you can, but I'm going to leave mine as it is. Now I'm going to be placing this, these three pieces down here. So this is one and a half inches. I need to center this on my spine. So I'm going to mark three quarters from the center on the top and the bottom of my spine piece. Then I'm going to take my first hinge, the larger of the two, Fold two over on each side. That gives you your three center half inch segments. You're going to add your adhesive to the entire back side. Again, I don't recommend using double sided tape here, but if you are going to use double sided tape, you want to make sure that this entire piece is completely covered so that it doesn't lift off that spine piece at all once you have your pages attached and in the album. So once I have all of my adhesive on, I'm going to go ahead and lay this down here in the center and then centering it top and bottom as well. Then I'll take my bone folder and burnish this down. Open that up, and then we'll take our smaller hinge. We're going to put adhesive on the center one half inch section. Again, you want to make sure that you cover this entire half inch section with your adhesive so that it adheres down completely flat to this piece. 
Now we're going to place it in this middle section here using the score lines to guide our piece. So I'm just going to tuck two of them over so I can see this better, making sure the top and the bottom are lined up. Then I'm going to press it down. Then I'm gonna flip over this side and make sure that it is adhered in that score line there as well. Then I will burnish this really well. So that is adding the hinges into our cover. The final thing we will do in this tutorial is build the base pages for our album. For the base pages, you need to cut four pieces of cardstock to five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. On each of these pieces, we're going to put the eight and a quarter inch side on the scoreboard and score at one half and seven and three quarters. Then taking scissors, miter these corners from the score line inward on all four of our edges. We're going to repeat that with these other three pages. Once all four of the pages are scored and cut, we're going to fold back on those score lines and burnish these folds to create the front of the pocket page. And I like to burnish these on both sides so that they lay really flat. So I have all four of my page fronts and then I'm going to cut four pieces of cardstock to five and a quarter by seven and a quarter for the back side. I'm going to take my adhesive and apply it onto one of my half inch tabs. And then I'm going to take one of my plain pieces and line up the edges on the sides and the top. Make sure everything is straight and then burnish this down. Then I'm going to open this up, apply my adhesive here to the other half inch tab section. And then I'm going to close this so that it lays really flat. I'm going to burnish down this direction so that the pocket page is super flat and not a big pucker in my page. Then I have my page where this side will go on the hinge and this side will be open for a photo mat. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process with these other three fronts and backs to complete this step. So this has been a really challenging day for me today. Um, it seems like everything I've tried doing with this album has just not gone according to plan. By the time you're seeing this tutorial, hopefully I will have edited this to where there will be instructions on the screen where you will not have made the mistake that I made with my pages. If you didn't follow those instructions and you made your pages the same size as mine, you're going to have a problem with your pages and I'm going to show you how to fix it. So this five and a quarter inch page, when I put it on my hinge and close this, it's going to be too long for the cover because my cover is five and a quarter, but I have my half inch extension on my hinge. I need my pages to be four and three quarters. So I went ahead and cut one of them to four and three quarters, and I will show you how it will look. So if you followed the instructions on the screen with the text, your pages will be four and three quarters. So your pages, when your album is done, the page will be lined up correctly with the cover. All I did to cut my pages, just going to bring in my paper trimmer and put the entire thing in here. 
at four and three quarters. Actually, this side's not quite straight, so I'm gonna cut it off of that side. And I'm going to trim that down. So I've got my four and three quarter inch page. And I'm going to do that with all three of my final pages. So as you're doing this, if you made your pages five and a quarter, just go ahead and trim them down to four and three quarters. Now that the pages are the correct size, the tutorial is finished. In the next tutorial, I will begin building up my base pages for my album. So I hope you'll stick around for that tutorial. And hopefully it will go better than this one and I will get all of these kinks worked out. This is my first project for the new year and hopefully this is not setting the tone. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.